Howdy, y'all. We're finally really camping. In the Santa Fe National Forest. Mm -hmm. We got us a nice little spot here. Get a little creek. Let's go Good check idea. this creek out. Our little setup is so cute. I love it. I love it. And the cool thing about the region that we're at in the Santa Fe National Forest is this is the furthest south or the southernmost point of the Rocky Mountain Range. So we're going to be just traveling through it and we decided to start at the southernmost point and work our way north. So like we said, if you watched our last um, video, we're kind of exhausted. We woke up one morning just not feeling good, kind of like little vomity a little bit nobody threw up though i think we've just been blowing and going too much so we were happy to come out here we're gonna post up here for three or four days we don't even know problem is we don't have any phone service here but if we go down the road a little ways we had some there were camp spots over there too but they were all taken a lot of day users fishing and stuff because this creek gets really big the plan is we're just gonna hang out and we're gonna relax and we're gonna rest um, and it sounded like thunder earlier. Isn't it the prettiest pine cone you've ever seen? It's got a really soft texture. Sorry guys, I just wanted y'all to see it. It's like gold. It sounded like a squirrel behind me like messing with something in my ear. But we had some uh, thunder. It's been going on for a while. Um, but we don't know if it's going to rain. Probably not. We're not sure. It is a little chilly here, which is good. We wanted that. So I'm going to get dinner started. And tonight we are feeling about some pasta. So I'm going to make a spinach and artichoke pasta. So let me get that rolling. And guys, I want y'all to see how hard Kelly has been working on the cookbook. Bam. I don't know if y'all can see that. Yeah. And this is actually what we're cooking tonight. Well, Kelly's cooking. And we know that we have announced by posting, but these are the new cutting boards. Bamboo, hard, thick, that kind of hurt. Little wood engraved with a laser. That right there, y'all. This is Uptown High Rent here, guys. All right, so I'm making a spinach and artichoke pasta. I'm gonna use a penne pasta. This is what I put on my recipe, but you can use any kind of pasta noodle you want. I would prefer a shorter noodle, but you could do a long one too if you want. And bear with me, this is the first time I've actually really cooked with this whole setup. So I'm kind of like, oh, where's everything? So I'm gonna let that melt. I've got some butter in there. And I have some garlic. First thing I'm gonna do is press my garlic in here. So I put my garlic in there and then now I have my spinach and I'm just gonna wilt it. My pan was a little too hot so my garlic's kinda getting brown a little too quickly but that's okay, I like crunchy garlic. Once this wilts down, I'm gonna remove it from the pan onto a plate. My spinach is all wilted, and so I'm gonna remove it to a different plate because we're gonna use the skillet to do the artichoke. Okay, I've got two more tablespoons of butter. Toss that in there. All right, my butter is all melted. I drained the juice from the artichoke, and we're just gonna put them in here a little bit. Artichokes are done. Kind of wish I would have got that big jar of artichokes now. I used to get that small one though from the pizza. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those onto the plate here. I've got two tablespoons of butter. I'm gonna let that melt again in the skillet. I'm also gonna go ahead and get my pasta water rolling. I need to bring that to a boil. So while I'm waiting on my pasta to boil, I'm gonna go ahead and shred some Parmesan cheese and mozzarella cheese. And this is, I'm making the cream sauce uh, with this and milk. I'm gonna do a half a cup of the Parmesan. That's a little more than half a cup. And I've got some mozzarella. 
I'm gonna do about one and a half cups of the mozzarella. Okay, my water's boiling. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in my pasta noodles. I'm gonna kick, cook those until al dente, which is 10 minutes. Okay, I've got my burner back on. I've got two tablespoons of butter in here again. And I'm gonna let that heat up because I kind of turned it off for a second. And then I'm gonna throw in some uh, flour. I just tossed in my flour and I'm gonna make a roux. So I'm gonna kind of keep stirring it. Did three tablespoons of flour. So I'm just kind of stirring this around a little bit. I want it to be a little bit darker, maybe Kind of like a golden brown is what I'm going for. It looks like it's a little darker, so I'm going to go ahead and pour in some milk. I'm going to do about three cups of milk. And I'm going to let that stir around just a minute, and then I'm going to pour in my cheese that I shredded earlier. So when I said I was gonna make a roux, anytime I make a roux for a sauce, what it does is it helps to thicken it up. And it also helps to bring out the flavor if you're using butter or bacon grease. So if you were not to cook your uh, roux long enough, it could make it where it wouldn't thicken up properly. Now, it is time for the cheese. Looks like a lot of cheese. Whisk that in to incorporate a little bit. And then we're gonna add our seasonings, which are coarse salt and pepper. Freshly cracked salt and pepper is the best in flavor. And especially if you use Himalayan salt, that is the best. It tastes so good and it's so rich in flavor. You don't wanna let it sit because the cheese will get kind of clumpy you want to kind of keep stirring it so it incorporate and melt everywhere really good also want to do a splash of cayenne pepper if you don't like salty I mean spicy stuff don't use the cayenne pepper but I like a little kick the cream sauce looks like it's almost done we're still letting it get pretty thick so you just want to keep stirring it till it's to your liking your consistency that you want your pasta sauce to be so I turned my burner off because it's kind of popping a lot. And I think I might need some more cheese. I might do some more mozzarella cheese. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit more, I think. I'm gonna try just that much. Maybe that'll be good. So I think we've got our consistency here. A little bit thicker, I like that. So Jesse Stevenson made this cute little oven mitt. Well, it's just a little pot holder, but I can use it to grab my cast iron skillet. But oh my gosh, it's so cute. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Jesse. That was so sweet. So now I'm going to use my weak hand and pour this in here. We've got our spinach and our artichokes. That's gonna go in. All right, it is time to eat. Man, it looks good, Kelly. It smells so good. And we get to put more little cayenne pepper. Yes. Yeah, so we're gonna put when we after I plate it, we're gonna put some crushed red pepper and some breadcrumbs, if you like. Or if you just have bread, you just use bread, I guess. So I didn't end up using all my sauce. And we got some bread crumbs. Man, that just looks so fancy, Kelly. All right, we're ready to eat. Yeah, I'm starving.
good beautiful morning everybody we slept in till like it was like nine o'clock when we woke up it felt really good but we just finished breakfast and we have been bombarded by five they're slipping my, my mind the name of them are slipping my mind right now it's but like, they're like chipmunks it's like a cross between a squirrel and a chipmunk yeah they're if you know what the, the they are put them in the comments below you probably can't see it he's on our tire right now so we popped the hood just because we're both worried they're gonna try to build a nest in there. We've had that happen one time, a long time ago. They chewed uh, through our blinker. Yeah, they chewed through the wires on the blinker and they built a nest, so we're just gonna keep it open. That's what we're gonna start doing <clears throat> now more often. We saw someone doing that in Tucson and I can Everybody did it in Tucson. We were in a campground in Tucson and everybody had their hood open because during the day, it gets in the 70s, but then at night, it gets down into like sometimes the 30s. Which I don't think it got that cold here last night. No. So they might not build a nest. So if you don't know, even if your hood is shut, these little critters can get in through underneath the vehicle because it's not all sealed off and they can build nest in there. So if you've been driving around all day and you pull up to camp and it's cold outside, well, your engine is going to stay hot. So they're seeking something warm. They're going to go in there and build a nest. If you open the hood, it'll ask for the engine A to cool off quicker and B... It prevents them from having shelter over their head and then exactly. they're less likely to build a nest. Yeah, so it would be just like them going out to a bush and building a nest. But man, so. we're having to close everything because... Yeah, we closed all the doors on the trailer because we didn't want them getting in there because they've just been hopping around. I mean, they've been getting close. <laughs> like They've been getting maybe a foot away from us. And, and you I'm know us... Whoever's camp people camped here in the past has probably fed them but you know us we always keep all of our doors open and we don't have any of them open right now just the hood because really, they got ups guys oh he's out he's gone okay okay good um and he's coming back towards us there he goes and just popped over okay <laughs> they're getting freaked out uh, there he goes they're fast but when we got here yesterday it was cloud cover and mm -hmm. this part of uh, santa fe because it's coming up, uh, the moisture comes up from the valley of the Rio Grande and it hits here and it uh, produces a lot of rain, a lot of rain clouds. So it rains constantly up here. So we were expecting some rain. I'm just really digging this right now. This is nice. it's so pretty. I'm sure y'all saw it yesterday, but that view, just something else. And so that road keeps going. It keeps going. There's supposedly more campsites down there maybe maybe we'll get bored and we'll go take a drive and check it out i don't know you never know yeah because this is a dead end from where we started this is a dead end this is called cow creek cow creek c-o-w creek yeah that's what we're on and we're in a very small spur of the creek we passed some other campsites that way and the creek was really pretty and big it was really nice looking. but they were taken down to the very bottom it feeds what's the river it was, I mean, it was a huge raging river and it was blue, I mean, clear water. It was so pretty, but it was all private, private property. That was all, all private around. property. We're just chilling. Haven't done this in a long no. time, man. No, we haven't. All right, we've been working. I've been working on my recipes. I realized I forgot a recipe and I was like, oh my God, let me put it on there. And then I was just kind of fixing the way the other ones look. Uh, Cody was actually editing the vlog. So now we've decided it's time to go play. I just want to have a little fun. We want to go play. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go. I'm going to drive. Yes, many of you ask. <laughs> How do you fly the drone? I fly the drone and Kelly drives. Yeah, so that's how I want to get done. some cool drone shots and keep going this, yeah, down this we road. We want to check out the rest of this road. So here we go.
we're at the end of this road here with this private sign. So we'll just have to turn back around and go back down. Kelly was owning it. Guys, y'all don't even know how rough this road was. She was uh, she's owning it pretty nicely. I'm proud of her. See, Kelly knows how to handle a little roughness. Picking up Miss Daisy. You can drive on, Miss Kelly. It's all with the, with the hips. You gotta move your body with it. You gotta move it, shake it, move your money, make it. Mm. You know that song. You know something I learned about aspen trees because there's a whole thicket up there. Is that aspen trees are all connected to the same root system? Like all these right here. Yes, like all these right here. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I really think that's a fact. I think I remember reading that. I thought that was pretty cool. No, no, I'm good. Oh, it's really cool. Wow. This is really pretty, y'all. We have made it about as far as we want to go right now because this is a really long road that takes you all the way up there to the top of Elk Mountain. It's a really high peak. Don't know how tall it is, but we are about to head back down to camp. You been enjoying driving? Yeah. She's got this, guys. She's got this. Oh, and shockingly, we got cell phone service up here. That was pretty cool. Well, <laughs> it looks like all our stuff is still here. Of course, we haven't heard another vehicle or anything come by in a long, 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 long time. I'm proud of Kelly. You did good driving, girl. Guys, I got something pretty cool to show y'all. About six, seven months ago, we received this filter system from Survivor Filter, and we installed it in the house. But we took it with us, and we made... A little attachment here so that I can hook it directly up to well, hold on yeah here and filter the water out of the tank so I can just bam and then this here is an on off valve so I can just take the water pop it in there There it goes. Now, for me not to waste any water, what I've learned <laughs> is I'll actually go back around with these hoses and put the water that's left in these hoses back in the tank because it actually holds a lot of water in these lines. So I started doing that recently to save water. You know this is handier than pockets on a shirt, right? 
and this is very very good filtered water i'm talking about it is the best water i've ever had in my entire life it makes me want to drink water I so mean, what is it like it takes out fluoride and it pretty much takes yeah. out everything so it's very pure but it is survivor filter and that is our pump that we use when we go um, kayak camping oh, the yeah. little water little water filtration system that we carry with us it's the same company so they sent us this and we are very happy with it. It is the only water that we drink, so we love it. Well, no, we drink whatever we can get our hands on, but this well, is our favorite. Yeah, I mean, if I had the option, this is what I would drink, but. All right, so now I'm gonna get dinner started and I'm making an olive loaf bread. I've made it before if when you we watch burnt the, chicken. the burnt chicken. Meteor chicken. The meteor chicken, yeah. if you go back and you watch that vlog. Uh, that was our appetizer, but it was so good and it was so much food that we're gonna actually eat it as our meal. So it's kind of like a pizza. It's got all kind of olives on it, cheese. It's very delicious.
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Today, the plan is to drive back up to the top of that mountain. Uh, we know we have phone service, and we're going to try to upload our first video out here. All right, so let's get on up there, and let's see if we can get any uploads. Yeah, going. It looks like I didn't kill that little booger. Yeah, we wanted to check and make sure they weren't in the engine before we drove off, so we're all good. The slightest little noise, <laughs> little noise drives him nuts, and so we had to stop He's back there trying to figure it out. I, don't know, I see it. I see it. <laughs> This is the second time we've stopped, mind you. Okay. <laughs> yep. We'll just have to listen to it and I'll fix it later. I think we had it flipped the other way impossible. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> we have made it up to the top of, not the top of the mountain, but we are back where we were yesterday because we have phone service, like Kelly was saying. Once again, guys, look how cool this looks. Look at this. And it's working. We got ourselves our solar panels, keeping our uh, Jackery kind of where it was already at on power. So we got the Wee Boost up there amplifying the signal. We got the Wee Boost plugged into the Jackery. We got this laptop plugged into the Jackery. We got this powering. Got 116 watts going in, and it goes from like 12 to 160 watts coming out. That's what's being pulled out between the laptop and the Wee Boost. And if you're curious of how we're able to do this, we both have hotspots on our cell phones. I have AT&T and he has Sprint. So we have two different networks, so it helps. If one isn't working well, the other one is probably going to be working better. So um, right now we're using Cody's hotspot. Yeah, and... mine's right there, right above the antenna. And it's plugged in directly to the laptop. And we're already 9%. I don't know if y'all can see that. We're already 9% uploaded. What? This is so cool. Because when we were at that uh, Airbnb in Longview, Texas, it I think I spent two hours trying to get 1% uploaded. And we've been up here for not long at five, all. Five or maybe 10 minutes. Maybe and we're already minutes. up to 9% uploaded. That's, That's awesome. pretty cool. It is a short video though. It is. However, I think we're gonna just hang out up here for the rest of the day. No. For about an hour and a half. At least till it's uploaded and I've got to research where we're going next on my phone and where we're camping. But I guess we'll just see you guys on the next one. Yeah. And when we figure it out where we're going, you're going to know where we're going. And we'll catch you on the other.